Hi, welcome. Today we are going to be doing clock chokes. I'm sure you guys have uh, maybe have some experience with those. If not, hopefully uh, some of the stuff I show you will help you out. Maybe new, maybe not new, but you're going to get it either way, so here you go. Um, we'll just uh, get right into it, wherever my... Oh, here we go. All right, clock chokes. So we're going to start here in the turtle position. And now the turtle position can end up a number of ways. It can end up from a guard pass, they turtle. It can end up from a takedown, a scramble, whatever the situation is. We're going to start off basically in a normal sort of wrestler sort of position here. From this position, guys, I like to have my hand controlling in the hip, sort of like a, like a flipper of a fish or like a rudder or something like that, right on the hip. So I'm here, a lot of pressure on him, connected to him, so if he moves, I can feel him. I'm pushing him around. So for the clock choke, what I want to do is I'm coming inside with my hand, just like a knife. And I want to be in his collar here. All right, so we're gonna come in here. The hand goes in the collar, and this hand comes off the hip for a second and takes the slack out of it. You see that? So here, hand comes inside, pull the slack out, and we're here. Now for the finish for this, we're just gonna start with this basic clock choke, and then we're gonna show a bunch of variations off this, but I want you guys to see the way that I started, the way that I like to do the clock choke, and then you'll understand the other stuff better later, okay? So we're here. Hand comes inside, and then back in the hip to control him. I like the hip better than, some guys like the hand and stuff like that, but the hand, if a guy's strong, he can start doing this and different things like that. And another thing about the hand, sometimes if you have to reach really deep, and he'll reach over my elbow, and he can, yeah, he can roll me over and do stuff like that. I like the hip, it controls the center line of his body a lot better, and his, his mobility is limited from me being inside here on his hip, okay? So I'm here, a lot of pressure on his back. And then to finish, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here, put my head to the mat, and then just like a clock, I'm going to start, I'm going to start walking around. The mechanism of a clock show, guys, is not so much pulling, which there is a bit of that component as well, but the main part of it is your body walking around, which pushes his head into your hand, which is the mechanism of the choke. So, so this will show here, we're here in a good neutral position. Controlling his hip so he can't slide away from me. This comes into the collar and give it a good tug. Now sometimes his chin will be down a bit. Guys, nobody just sits there like a, a, a baby turtle and just sticks their neck out like this, right? They're, he's gonna have his chin down. So sometimes you're gonna need to get in there and do a little dirty work on his neck. You're gonna have to slide it in there. So just be mindful that it doesn't always go in so easy. You might have to give him a little bit of lube, and that's with your hand. And that's not dirty. That's here, head to the ground, and then walk. You guys understand that basic thing so far? Any, any questions about that? All right, let's give it a shot, and uh, then we'll get into some of the other stuff. Go. Let me just show you the mechanism. I should have showed you this the first time. So what's happening, everybody, is um, you're like this, right? The hand is coming, you're here in the hip, I'm controlling the hip. This hand is coming in, and this hand comes up, just for a second, and just takes the slack out of it. Because that little bit extra slack that comes out of it, it sometimes can make the difference in you finishing or not, or you having to, sometimes you'll end up just running around, running around, and you can't finish them. Is anybody having any, any trouble with that first part so far? Pretty, pretty normal for you guys. One other thing I want to mention, some people, somebody asked me, why don't I like this sort of finish? I'm sure maybe some of you have seen that sort of finish. I personally have never personally liked it this way because if sometimes you lose it, you, you, you end up losing the whole thing. Because if I lose this one, it comes off. I'm in, a, I'm in a better position, and I feel I just have more control with it that way. So I personally like that way. But it doesn't, if you like to finish the other way, it doesn't mean it's wrong or right, or there's many different ways to, to, to get this done. So that's the basic first clock joke that I like to do. 
Now we'll go into some variations depending on their reaction to you. Everything that I show, and even my other classes that, that I've, you've seen me teach, everything is sequential. I don't show things in, in, a, in a vacuum. If I have something and it goes to the next thing because something he did, it's counter, 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 counter. And that's jujitsu, how one guy gets better than the other guys. They're able to sequence things faster than the other guy can provide answers for what you're throwing at them. So, normal clock choke, sometimes that's fine, sometimes it's not. If a guy's strong and you can't kind of get them to the mat, it's harder, or if you're smaller than they are, you can't put enough pressure down. So one thing that I started, I learned from my instructor is um, sort of probably from wrestling. Like, a, does anybody know what a spiral ride is from wrestling? Sort of that same idea. So a spiral ride, same thing. My hand is in the hip. I have a lot of pressure behind him. And this sort of take thing can work in no gi as well, just like wrestling, you cup it here. But the gi, you have a grip, which helps. So I'm going to grab the outside of his elbow here. You can grab just the elbow. You can grab the fabric, whatever feels comfortable to you. And what's, what's, uh, what's going to happen here is I'm going to push his arm sort of like at a 45 degree angle away from him. This hand is still in the hip as I kind of just push around and I'm going to kind of walk in a bit of an arc. So I'm going to break him down like that. Okay, come back this way. So I'm here, I'm on the elbow, I'm in the hip, this arm pushes 45 and I'm just gonna walk around as my hand here stays in his hip and kind of just straightens out. That'll help him, uh, help me put his hips on the floor. Okay? So we're gonna end up in this position here. Not the most flattering position for him. It's not good. Um, he's not, he doesn't really have a good base. I have him basically collapsed. Now we're just gonna enter the clock choke the same sort of way. This hand's gonna come in. I'm gonna grab this. I take the slack out of it. And I'm going to just grab this leg right here. You can grab the pants, you can grab this, and then I'm going to just start walking on that way. So we're here in the spiral ride, or just a regular normal wrestler sort of thing. I like to use my chin and put a lot of pressure in them, stay connected. It just helps me feel their movement and things better the more I have connection with them, and it kind of bothers them. It's kind of not a douchey move, but it can be a little bit uncomfortable for them sometimes. So I'm here. Elbow, inside. You see how I'm always connected to him the whole time? I didn't give him any space to move. After I collapsed him here, this hand's gonna come in. Quick pull. A lot of times this happens, he puts his foot up. He's trying to make space to get his legs up underneath him. And I'm just gonna grab it. What I'm trying to do here is I'm putting, I want my chest like right behind his neck. I can control him from getting up because posture is kind of my enemy when it comes to a clock choke. If I can't posture him down and put a lot of pressure in him, if he's kind of push, if he, if he gets on his hands and starts pushing up or something, I can't finish. It. So if I can keep my posture, I'm kind of supermaning on top of him. I mean, try to move. I mean, it's he can move a little bit, but it's not the easiest thing for him to do. This comes in here. I always like to take the slack out of it. Sometimes you can get it gripped right away, and as you get more experienced with these type of grips, you'll know if it's set or not. But if not, just give it a little extra on the hip here. And I'm not putting that much pressure on it. I mean, it's, it's very, very tight. And you're kind of contorted and twisted. And it's um, not the most comfortable thing. Did you guys see that okay on this side? Let me just run through it one more, one more time because we kind of have two components here. We got the choke and we have the, the breakdown. Which direction do you want to see it from? Straight ahead, is this good from here? Okay, so we're here. We're on our toes. We're not necessarily hanging on our knees because if he initiates a scramble, I want to be on my feet here. A lot of pressure into him. We're here. Elbow, 45. You can put your head down if you need to. Sometimes, most of the time it will come on before you even do that because he's really, you, you really get your arm quite deep because of the angles that you're at compared to where he is on the ground. Pretty good so far? Let's do it. Is, is everybody understanding that part so far, how to get them on their side? Is it, is it making sense? No? Yes. So I'm getting so I'm having trouble like pushing her down to the side. 
Let me see you real quick. Just show me. Show me quickly. Wait, sorry. You gotta, you gotta spin around. That's why. Oh, okay. You're kind of just kind of pushing her down. You kind of yeah. need a little bit of a circle. So I'm here, and this hand is gonna go basically across the body. I would oh, like okay. to shoving out the window. How does that feel? <laughs> we're kind of, we're kind of yeah. moving from here, and we're moving like 45 degrees. Basically. Okay, that's what I'm missing. Then. Everything okay. else is great. We can go over it after if you want. Okay. So that's that's one. That's the only problem. Okay, so one variation of that that we're going to show, and some people already asked me this, but I had to follow up to it because I know how it, what happens on this. So we break them down. We do everything the same. We're here. We set it. But sometimes this leg is far away. Like you can, they're just sort of on their back. And some people are like, I can't reach the leg. No problem, you can just grab this leg and do the same thing. You can. So the first one, I'm trying to grab this. It's far away. I can grab this and do it. So we have that variation. We also do a modified bow and arrow choke, which this really sucks. It's kind of extra strange. So there are different variations there. <coughs> Uh, let me look. So I'm here. Grab the gear. Like where would I grab it? Yeah, you can if you if you want to just grab the gear or something like that. I like this because it really contorts them, and it it gives you a lot of control, and it makes it very awkward for them to get out. Like here, if I grab this, he might be able to just kick or put, kick it off with my with his other hand or something like that. Some guys, yes, some things like this will happen. But if I have this, what's he gonna do really here? I mean, he can kick a little bit, but he has no, he has not, it's super weird. <laughs> and if I'm here, I mean, I, yeah, it's hard. Like if he has the pants, he might, he might be able to just, kick, he can probably just kick it off and then come out. But if I have this, I get him twisted up like a, like a cricket or something. I don't even know, what, you know, or if, or if I'm on the, on the side here. It's super hard, like even if he tries to, he's actively trying to get out, because he's collapsed, his body's twisted. He needs to get his knees underneath him, or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll show you these two sequences, and then we're gonna, we're gonna practice these two, and then we're gonna move to a couple variations. So we're here. I'm always here, guys, lots of pressure. I'm not, I'm not hanging out on my knees here. I wanna keep pressure on him, because it makes his mobility more difficult, and, and the, when I'm connected to him, I can feel where he's moving. So here, once again, this hand. One other thing about this hand. You can grab the inside of the pants, if you like that. In, in the gi, this gives a lot of control. You can just put the hand here. Some people like to do this because it feel like it's stronger. That when, they, when they try to push out, they can make more force. But it's sort of preference. I, I kind of do all of that, I don't know. I don't, I'm not consistently doing it one way, but I do like holding on to that webbing there because it gives you a, a pretty good anchor. So I'm here. This leg is close, grab it. Some folks ask me, do you need to put your head to the mat on this one here? You can, no problem, but if you get this super tight, the mechanism of this is this, guys. Of course, you're, you're turning around, but as you walk, your shoulder is forcing their, their head and their neck into this choking end. Do you see that as I walk around? So it's super tight right now. So I can kind of just do it here. If I need to put my head to the ground and really start walking, I can. And what ends up happening is if you don't get it set tight, if there's more slack, you'll need to turn around more to finish it because there's more more real estate in here to get the choke on. You got, do you understand that? Does that make sense? Okay, so one last time. Uh, let's go this way. Here. Any questions? Does it make sense? Really the same as the first one. We're just grabbing the close leg instead of the other leg. And then that knee behind the head is just an extra variation. And that second one, 
actually works quite good if you don't get it set all the way. So let's say you're tr you think you have the clock choke on, but it's a little bit looser. When you do that knee behind the head, that second one, it takes up that extra space that you would need to do more circling with on the first part of it. You understand what I mean? Let's give it a shot. Ready, go. Okay. <laughs> now I've shown you what ends up happening when you can break them down. And this is important, right? Being able to control their posture is what enables you to get the choke or not. Let's say you're trying all this stuff and you can't get them down, it happens. Maybe you still have this set and he's, you're trying to get your head to the mat, nothing, and he just kind of does a push up. Does anybody, have anybody do that to them? Is this a defense anybody experienced before? It happens sometimes. People know the clock choke, they want, you want to have them pressured into the ground. So what, what I like to do in this situation, go back down. So when I'm trying to get in, I can't break him down and he does like this. You can just do a rolling barrel, boiler. Roll, rolling bow and arrow choke because of that posture. <laughs> Their posture, when he postures up, he gives you a, a window and you can roll right through. It's very easy actually. It looks a little flashy, but it's not that complicated. Especially once you have the neck set really well and he just pushes, keep this. You're gonna just, here, slow motion. This is coming through. You're gonna roll through. You gotta catch this leg, guys. In a, per sorry. In a perfect world, this comes over, and then you just finish. We'll do it from the other position so you guys can see. Which one are you? Uh, I would face that way. Okay. So we get everything set. Everything's good, and he just pushes up, which is usually not good for me. Make sense? Does anybody need to see that again or have any problems with it? You want to see it? Okay, everything is the same. We're trying to break him down. Maybe we can't. We just get it set anyway. He pushes up. This happens. More than, especially if, if a person is possibly a little larger than you or just a, a strong person, they'll push up. Yeah, you can just take the back here. That's always, there's always different options. But this works well as well because you're right into a finish, right away. <coughs> One more time I'll show you. You wanna see a different direction? I don't know, I keep forgetting what direction I am. Let's do this, this way. <coughs> so we're here, set, he postures up. I just come up with him, the leg comes over through the hole. If you have the choke set really good, it's, he's, it's on before you even get him rolled over. It's very, very deep already. You wanna give that a shot? I mean, it's fun. Let's do some flipping and flopping. Let's do it. Go. Bring it on in. You guys in the cheap seats back there. One thing I didn't mention, but some of you kind of already understood it, is when you, when you do that, when you roll through this lick, you gotta, if you kick it a little bit, it helps you roll. Some of you guys were getting stuck like halfway through and you're kind of, this foot, you're kind of kicking it to help whip them all the way to the other side. Some, some of you people were doing it naturally and some of you were kind of getting halfway. If you, when you kick that leg through, if you just push it, it pushes them to the other side. So your leg kind of whips them. It's a bit of a pendulum sort of effect, okay? We'll do one more last variation, and uh, we're getting short on time. And this happened, a, a numerous, if you folks are asking this, this was a, a problem that you had, and there's a counter for it. This move I learned from my instructor, and I think he created it, I've never seen it anywhere. It's probably an old judo thing. He, he thinks he was the first one that ever did it, but maybe you've seen it, tell me, I don't know. So we're here, and we're trying to do the clock choke, we're trying to do it, and he just flops onto his side. Did anyone have anybody do that to them? I saw some of you put people doing it here, where you're trying, to, you're trying to run the choke and they're unwinding it, which is not necessarily a bad strategy because I can't finish the choke now. Maybe, maybe I pass him, but at least he's not getting choked. So some people will do that occasionally. They're trying to do this here and they just flop on the side, okay? 
I'm gonna get this leg, and, and a lot of times they'll put this arm out, they're trying to stop you. So I have everything hooked here, and now I just step over, block the hip. You, you see what's happening here? I got him here, but this is, this is not even the finish. The finish is this. I'm putting my knee and turning him into his hand. So, sorry Marcus. This is the shitty part of the program. I apologize. So I'm here on the clock too. He pops over, I lose it. I like to grab it here, so I isolate his arm. Step over, hand here. My head is on his belly button, and you can almost finish it there already. But if you do this, and just push it in that way, it's a little extra dirty. It's like, it's like a little sauce on the top, you know? It's already good, they seasoned it well, but they still have that bottle on the table when you go to the restaurant, you know what I mean? They always, you need a little bit extra, and that's what that is. It's that special sauce, you know? We're here, he flops, great. And it's pretty tight on his neck here. I might be able to just put my wrist into him. But if you do this, it's just like an extra, it's like kicking him when he's down already. So, anybody, anybody want to see it again? You want to see it again, Marcus? Marcus wants to see it again. It's good. All right, so we're here. Clock choke, he bails on it. Boom. I lock it up here. I step over. I cover the hip here so he doesn't follow me. I keep walking around. Head. I'm sort of in that position where you would be, you're gonna paper cutter choke somebody with the hand on the arm here, right? We're here. You can just hang out there, surf on his face a little while, you know? Let him enjoy it. <coughs> Do you guys get that? Does, does that make sense? Earmuffs. <laughs> does anybody want to see it again? <laughs> One more time, or you guys got it? Okay, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, build, I'll do it sweet style, okay? <laughs> so the finish, guys, I'm here. A lot of pressure on him. Like, like I said, you can probably, if I just twist my wrist, I might be able to get it here. But if I do this, it's... Your, it seems like your hand is twisted, but it's, it's tight on his neck. And it sucks. So go piss your partner off. Ready, go! Push this here. Slide it and push it in. Push it, push your face into your hand. No, you gotta put your knee on his face and push it into your hand. Uh, yeah, you wanna, you, wanna, you wanna turn his face into, your choking hands on the other side, you wanna turn his face into the choke. All right, we're, uh, we're running a little bit over, even though we started a little bit late. Um, so I'll just recap these real quick for all of you. So we started off with a, a basic clock show. We're here in the hip. That was number one. Then we started with them being broken down from the spower run. That was number two. Number three was a variation with this. If we hit the leg the other way. This was a variation for that variation. Then we had, we're trying to do that and he pushes up. We did that. Then the last one was we're here and he flopped. What was that? This is only a small piece of all the things that are possible here. There's tons and tons and tons of things from this position. If you guys want to play with it, we can go into crucifix type stuff. We can still finish them. We can do double collar attacks. We can roll and take the back from here with the arm trapped. We can feed it to the other leg. We can go reverse up a platter. There's lots of things from this position. It's endless, guys. This is just a tip, or uh, just tip of the iceberg, basically. So I hope you guys learned some stuff today. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. I'm happy to help. If you have any feedback for me, also let me know. And uh, thank you guys very much again for coming to my class.
My name's Aaron. I didn't introduce myself, excuse me. My bad manners. But uh, thank you guys for coming and uh, thank you again.